Hello, my name is Candice. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm coming to you from Langley, BC, the passionate home. Today we are going to be using um, some stamps and some molds and we're actually going to be creating a little shadow box. So these are fabulous for gifts, for all, all sorts of things throughout the year. Even hanging being like a mini medicine cabinet in the back of your bathroom to hold a few things. But today we're going to be using um, Le Courier Stamp because I love it. And we are going to be using the brand new um, two page. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, this is called Rural Scenes. And you just get to create your own sort of English toile going on. And I love this stuff. So we're going to use some of that. And then we're also going to be using two of the new molds. So this is Dainty Flourishes. So lots of sort of architectural bits to it and a little bit smaller than some of the other molds that we have. So this one is Dainty Flourishes. So we're going to be using that one. And we're also going to be using uh, the Juliet mold. Look at those roses. They're so beautiful and romantic. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Um, we're going to get started with our molds so that they have a chance to glue on here. We're going to get that painted and then we're going to work on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to just set that aside for a moment. Um, when I'm using my, um, my molds, I like to use the air dry clay and um, you can see I wrap it up really well <laughs> once it's opened because um, otherwise it will dry out on you. And uh, you can reconstitute it, pretty amazing. Um, so if it does dry out, don't throw it out. Put it into a jar, put some water in there, give it a shake every day and just it'll reconstitute with the lid on. Yeah, it's pretty amazing actually. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is to make sure that I do have some um, cornstarch in my mold. So I'm just gonna dust them here. I'm gonna use these corner pieces, I think. And I don't need to go crazy in there, but these are beautifully detailed. These ones are fairly deep. Some of the molds are not as deep. So I do wanna make sure that I can get my clay out of there without having any, you know, um, distortion to them. All right, so I think those are the shapes I'm going to use on this one. This is the new one. This is one of the new ones, yeah. Who Dainty flourishes. One? Okay, so I'm just making them approximately the size that I think they're going to need to be. I'm going to add a little bit more into here, and um, I'm going to go right down to that end. There we go. So then I'm going to take my thumb and I'm just going to hold my clay in place and then pull off the excess. So I'm working from the center out. This is the Dainty Flourishes mold and watch as I just pop that out. Oops, rolling it back. Look at the detail on here, you guys. So it sticks. Look at how gorgeous is this? Oh, so much it's detail, stunning. right? It looks like a bird's wing. It's mm. so beautiful, like so delicate. So I think it's amazing, yeah. So here we go, a little bit more. So I'm just gonna mirror, this one actually has, so you've got it going both directions. So that's fantastic for a piece like this. And we're just going to push this one in. I've got way too much now, you know how it works. Here we go, making sure that it's fully inside of there and behind here, aren't I? And again with my thumb. So and the reason that I do dust it is like, you don't want to distort it while it's still so fresh when you pull it out. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Here comes the magic. We're going to push from behind, get it started and roll it back. Stunning. There we go. Yeah. All right. So these ones here, dainty flourishes. That one's going to go there as well. And I think I'm just going to glue those on right now as we speak. So I'm just using a thick white glue. I'm using weld bond today. Tight bond is another one that we use often. Basically you want a thick white glue that's going to dry clear. All right. So you don't want yellow yucky wood glue or something. And make sure it's going to stick to whatever your surface is that you're gluing onto. I like to flip it over and just get the majority down the center and then I'll use my finger to smush it out to all those beautiful edges. Okay, so 
a good amount of glue, but not so much that it's going to go squishing everywhere else. Alrighty, approximately here. I don't want to push too hard at this point because my clay is still very fresh and very fragile and there's so many details in this that I don't want to lose those. And because with the clay, if I wanted to, I can manipulate this even though the shape is here. If I wanted this coming over the thing, I could just bend it over and put it exactly where I want it. And then once it glues, it's, it's there. And if I do get a little bit of overlap, I am going to be painting all of this the same color. So if I was going to be painting my box a color and my, my trim a different color, I would probably personally um, do a little bit of, so I just want to make sure it's sort of the same. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm okay with that. Um, if I was going to be doing um, the molds a different color, I like to get that paint on at least the first coat before I glue it down. Again, gently making sure all of those edges are down without distorting it too much. I think I want to get some of the roses in there. So we're going to put this one off to the side and we're going to pull out Juliet. And this one is just chock-a-block full of beautiful roses. And I think I might try and make this one here sort of a centerpiece. That's what I'm this thinking. This is perfect if you were making a shadow box for a wedding. And oh my goodness, Juliet, right? So Juliet, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this is, I mean, it can be Father's Day what we're doing today, but it could be anything, really. You can change it out. To, if you give it for Father's Day, have a beautiful photo of your father in the center there. And then switch it out when the time is, put somebody else's photo in there for a birthday or whatever, right? Oops, let's just dust this one again, just to make sure there's so many little bits of details in there. So with this one, you'll notice that it seems, they all sort of run into each other, but I can just easily, wherever I want it to stop, I can just trim around that. Okay, so again, I'm making it approximately the size that I'm working with, and then smushing that in there. All right, so let's flip this one over and then see what we have. Ready? So again, pushing from the back to release. Look at how gorgeous. So I'm gonna get rid of this piece here because it doesn't really work with my, and even this one here. There we go. And if I had a little, um, a little putty knife or something, I could do it a little bit cleaner, but I'm happy with how that's looking. Here's the issue because of my painter's tape. Um, that this is I the think bottom, right? This is the bottom. This is the top, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, and I can fold these down and go over. I'm gonna show you the back show. there. Yeah. Okay, so I can actually glue this on there and I'm going to see where it opens up. And I'm actually, actually I'm gonna glue it there and I'm gonna come with an X-Acto knife before it's fully dry and I'm just gonna separate it then. I don't have an exacto knife with me here. So my goal here is I'm going to paint the outside of this with a really beautiful dark gray. And I think that the roses and the the um, details, these molds here, I think it's gonna look a little bit like maybe cast iron. I'm gonna white wax it. That's my that's my goal. So okay. So I'm thinking if I should just snip that last, that little back area off just because what's going to happen is I'm going to forget when we're done. There we go. So I just cut that off at the back so that then it's going to be able to open and close. All right, so we're going to set this one aside for, well, for a few minutes. We're just going to let that get a bit of a crust on it before I get to painting it. So we're actually going to work now on the inside of this. And I've just cut a piece of a little bit of cardboard because I feel like trying to stamp in there and get what I'm the, the look I'm going for would be harder to do inside of this piece. So we're gonna set this one aside. So there's my board that I'm gonna be working on. All right, so molds are done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background. And so I'm going to be using the Courier Stamp. I want this one to be in um, the stone gray because I don't want it to be so in your face. And then when we do the um, rural um, 
since we're going to use the black IOD ink for that. Okay. I did actually consider making a sort of a sepia ink, mixing some of the stone gray and the turmeric yellow to do like a sepia background. Um, but because I'm doing this with the dark gray, I thought mm, we'll just keep it, keep it all sort of clean. All right. So I'm going to set this aside. Um, I have inked up my, my stamp pad already. So this one is the stone gray and I'm just on a flat surface making sure that I get this everywhere on my stamp. I'm going to keep that upside down right there and straight down and then I'm just going to give it a, a good little one hand is always on there so that it's not shifting, giving me a blurry effect. And there we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to re-ink the base of this one. And I'm not looking for perfection here. So I'm just going to go it's around there and just get the bottom of that re-stamped. Okay. So it looks like an old vintage newspaper. So that's the goal I was going for. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, so when I have used my stamps, I do like to give them an initial wipe down with just a wet wipe. And, um, and then when we're done here, I will pop this into the sink with just some warm soapy water. Okay, nice, easy cleanup, and it's ready to go for the next use. So we have our base set up, and then we're gonna go into these. And I don't know, Kara, if you can see, there are so many fun details and each one of these comes apart, comes off on their own so that you can create exactly the scene that you love. Okay. It's like a storybook. It it's totally is. Amazing. Yeah. So I did a little pre because I like to <laughs> preemptively have an idea of what I'm going for and this is sort of what I'm going for. Alrighty. So this again is a two page stamp. And it comes with two pages that match the stamp of masks. So we will be using a few of the masks and showing how that works. Alrighty. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab this beautiful tree here, this big one. I want this one to be about here. Actually, I want it to be off. So it's not perfect inside of there. I want it to be coming off of my paper. Alrighty. So I'm going to have one here and then we're going to grab maybe this one here and we're just going to have this one and I'm probably going to go right over again. So I want the tree to be in front of the dirt. So I'm going to grab some dirt or some ground, terra firma, you know. Um, so let's just grab maybe this one here, although I couldn't, yeah, we're going to do this one here. So this is going to be our little mound of soil. What I want to be in the front is the first thing that I'm going to stamp. So if I wanted the dirt to be in front of the trees, I would stamp the dirt first and then mask it off. I want the trees to be in the dirt, so I'm going to stamp my trees first and then come in with the masks that match. So. Uh, the masks do have a little bit of color to them now, which is an amazing upgrade. Can you see? Oops. Yes. So when these first came out, they were clear and we lost them everywhere. <laughs> so I love that they're a little bit easier to find, um, but they are very, very small. And I do have to, uh, I've seen some other people do um, brilliance with labeling them and all that and I'll have to get to that but I was just having fun right away so I haven't got there yet okay so I do know that this is one of my stamp my masks you can see that it actually covers the whole image when it's stamped down there it'll cover the image perfectly so I want this one out and I want the other tree yeah it's here so again they're very small very easy to misplace. So I am going to pick this guy up here just with a thin mount. Alrighty, so when you place it down the way that you want it to, to be seen, you can just use your thin mount to pick it up because it will stick to that. And I'm going to be using IOD's black ink. Okay, so nice and juicy. 
There we go. And those of you that have watched me do anything know that I'm a messy stamper. <laughs> so I always have a wet wipe alongside me and I'm just going to clean up those little edges so that I don't get any ghosting on there for me. And then with my thin mount, I'm going to go slightly off. Uh, we're gonna go up a little bit because I think so once it's down, I have to commit to it, okay? I don't want any shifting. Ta-da! Perfection. Look at all of the detail, all of the leaves, even in the bark here, in the branches. Well, some of it's a little bit darker than others. Yeah. No... Okay, so I want this one to come in now, but I actually want it to go a wee bit over this tree. So we're gonna bring in our mask lay it right over top make sure it's lined up because if you have a little bit showing then what's going to happen is you will have a little bit of a line there so again this one i'm just going to capture it and we're going to stamp on that one now i'm going to keep mine just with the stamps as is but once this ink is dry and you can heat set it you actually can come in and paint right over top of that and add whether you're using watercolors or mm. uh, you know an acrylic a chalk style paint whatever it is that you use so you can see where I've gone over there a wee bit and so now if I remove this it isn't muddy mm -hmm. it just ends where it's supposed to end we're gonna leave that one on there though because we're going to stamp over top of it again this little guy here is going to fit mm -mm, right there. So you can totally layer and layer and layer with these stamps. You can create anything you want because you're manipulating them to be where you want them to be. It's super, super user friendly. So now I want my soil coming in here. So we're gonna just lay this on, again, inking this one up. With these thin mounts too, it's got the grid on there so you can see what it is that you're doing. And because it's see-through and clear, I'm not having to really worry about exactly where my fingers are. I can see exactly where I want this to go, okay? And so before I lay it down, I'm looking and I want it there. There we go. So now I'm gonna remove these and you can see that it's, the tree is coming out of the dirt, not hidden and not muddy. Just makes sense. Beautiful. All right, and then we're going to use the little, um, there's like a little bridge and I love it. So taking another one off here, a little bit of a bigger scene, and I want this one a little higher up. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna do this because I wanna see if I can use, there's a lot of pieces on this that could be water. Can you see that one? It could be sky, it could be water. It's just sort of um, a reflection. And so I, we're gonna see if maybe we can fit that down there and maybe get some guys fishing. We'll also use it at some point up here as little bits of sort of clouds in our sky. So, and I think we're going to do this right here. Will my little fisherman fit on there? There's little guys in a boat and I thought this could be the water, right? You can see the water coming off of here. And so if it flows in and maybe our little fisherman can be down here. That's what I'm looking for right now. Let's just see if we had this little guy. And this could just be like an extension of the water, maybe like this. We're gonna go for it. Why not, right? I love that you can just like lay it out where you know you want it and then pick it all up and you're good to go. Don't do what I'm doing, which is stamping over your piece. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a lip there and I'm making sure I don't go over it, but you know. Certainly when I stamp, accidents happen. So about there, there we go. So I'm not pushing so hard that I'm distorting my stamp. I'm just making sure it's touched everywhere. There we go, look at him, yeah. our little fisherman. Oh, and I'm just gonna God. add that little that bit of so the shimmer, like yeah. it's got here, I'm gonna add some more shimmer, just so that it just gives that illusion again of water. There we go, I want the black. So I think we're just gonna extend the water 
even here. There we go, right? So it's giving that illusion in here. There we go. All right. Now I'm actually going to use this up in the sky as well to give us the illusion of clouds. I'm not going to be perfect. That one's could could have been a little darker. So just I think that's even good enough there. Alrighty, just a little bit of something different, a little bit of that illusion of some clouds. And then we have to come in with the little ducks. A couple ducks flying by. I'm gonna go like that. I, for one, am super excited to use the stamp, this new stamp. Right, there we go. And I think ducks always fly with one in the front, right? And then they're kind of, so let's do another one. I think that this would make amazing little gift cards as well. Like if you were, if you're somebody who does cards and all of that. Yeah, there we go, would, right? Yeah. These would be so great. So let's come back now because I'm ready to work on this. So this is our shadow box. This is going to pop right inside here, okay? And the reason I did it on paper and I will glue that down was just so that um, I could get all of these edges w without having to be confined to the box. So I thought this is an easier way to do that. And then I'm going to glue this down and it will be in there secure. So I've put on my molds and now I'm just going to come in and um, paint them up. So I wanted to make sure they had a wee bit of a crust on there. And now I'm just ready to it's paint. so beautiful. <laughs> the lens is so Yay. Beautiful. So a little bit of a simpler, certainly for me, a simpler project, but I just so wanted to try out these new molds and they're so beautiful. So here we go. And I'm just gonna go right in here into everything, create that nice pewter or, you know. So when I paint over my molds, it almost loses all of that detail, but you just have to stick with it because at the end, when you come back in with another color, whether that's a gilding wax or another color of paint or a, uh, a wax, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to come in with a different colored wax. So because of all these details, I'm just going to get a smaller little detail brush and really get it in there. Again, I'm not using a lot of pressure because I don't want to distort. And um, I do find that when I um, put my molds down, when they're fresh, and I glue them right away, and then I paint over them, I do find that I have less shrinkage. Um, oh. when I glue and paint them. And maybe it's because it just sort of keeps that moisture in a little bit longer. Not exactly sure. All right, so here we go. You can see that coming together. And then I'll just give it a quick dry so that we can move on to giving them a nice little wax. I think it would be really cool to put like, um, even like uh, some trinkets, like, um, your grandfather's old pocket watch mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know just keepsakes even all right so there's your basics okay. oh yeah i definitely can see a little bit more in here that's missing okay so i'm going to hit it with some heat and i'm going to not pull that off yet because otherwise i'm going to have to really work behind these guys to clear the glass <laughs> But you're gonna see once we dry these off a little bit and get some white wax in there, it just will bring them to life. I'm a texture junkie. Some people are really good at painting beautiful and smooth. It's not really my jam. And see these little bits where I haven't got it as I'm drawing, you can see. I'm gonna leave that, I love it. And certainly because I'm um, white waxing, I'm gonna leave those alone. So I am going to be careful when I wax because they are still very fresh, but I just want you to see the finished look at home or if I was just doing this here in the store, I would just let it naturally dry before I was going to go in and, um, and wax that. But I want you to see how it comes to life. I might come back and give it a second coat of paint in some areas but I can still do that over top of the wax after I've waxed. So I'm gonna just show you. 
the process. Alrighty. So when you're waxing, you want to always have something to wipe off. So it's wax on, wax off. It's gonna dip into here and get me some wax on here. I don't want big lumps of wax because I don't want those lumps to be a, a huge mass inside. So I just wanna, I don't want quite so much on there. I'm gonna start here and then just really gently. Hopefully I can do it gentle enough while it's still so fresh. Mm, might be too fresh. But the brush is probably a little hard. I know. Right? Yeah. So and then you're gonna take your, your cloth and just wipe that. You can see how that goes into the here, I'm gonna try and do it with a cloth instead and just see if I can get enough in there without doing damage. So when you do this at home, just be more patient and wait until it's dried fully before you come in and wax. But you can see how it's just going to be like a beautiful. So there you have it. And then I'm going to pull these off. I'm gonna do that just so that you can see. Look at how pretty. Wait, look at how gorgeous that is. It is. Sorry, the green really distracted from the, <laughs> the prettiness of it all. There we go. So I'm gonna come in and just finish the waxing. But look at how beautiful is that? Like what a great way to create a gift for somebody, for yourself, and just taking something very simple and putting your own twist on it. And all of these molds, like it's, to me, it's just phenomenal. I mean, you could do these and paint and gild them all with like gold or something and just really make it so beautiful and romantic. And I just love them. So again, we use the Le Courier stamp we used the new rural scene stamps. We've used the dainty flourishes and the Juliet molds. All of the products I used, uh, you can find at a stockist near you. Uh, just go to ironorchiddesigns.com and find a stockist near you. All right guys, we'll see you next month. Thanks so much.